Hello, ATX Festival. Thank you so much for being here and for having us. I'm, uh, I'm Mark Evan Jackson. I, uh, I play Dr. Kevin Cosner on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I uh, play on The Good Place, Sean. And the notes that the network wrote for me for this intro also said, and maybe someday I'll be on Superstore, already happened, try to find me. 100% serious. Um, we're, going to, uh, we're going to do a panel today. We're going to talk with some extraordinary, hilarious, and talented people. Uh, there'll be time about uh, 40 minutes from now for your questions. Uh, we assume in as much as you are here that you are fans of the programs we'll be discussing. Uh, so uh, please, uh, in order to get more questions in, forego the long prefaces of why you love these, these women and these shows. Questions begin with questiony words. Uh, so we'll be, we'll be looking for that. And if we don't hear them, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming these remarkable, hilarious stars of these stellar, stellar shows. Not only does she play good, bad, and neutral Janet, she also has played most of the other characters on NBC's The Good Place. Please welcome Darcy Carden. <laughs> Our next guest plays Amy San Santiago, Sergeant of the Uniformed Officers, and the by the book partner and partner to Andy Samberg's Jake Peralta on NBC's Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Melissa Fumero. <laughs> and from NBC Superstore, the No Holds Barred Assistant Manager and Voice Inside My Head, <laughs> Dina, please welcome Lauren Ash. This is me, this is me, this is me. The worst part is we talked about it ahead of time. <laughs> um, thank you for joining us. These chairs are scary. Oh, yeah. you're right. It does Ew, have a, just, maybe don't yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah, okay, we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be it's okay. gonna be great. We're gonna be okay. It's gonna be great. And if you can see up our dresses, just you guys let us know. Just be like, yeah. just be like, thank you. The thumbs up you just gave was like, we can love it. <laughs> That was, a, that was a not, I got your back thumbs up. That was like, <laughs> oh, I'll tell perfect. you. Yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, we're gonna cover some ground and, uh, and talk about each of you individually. I'm curious to begin, um, what makes you funny? What, what were your influences early? I, it's a given that they Real are. hot, right out the gate. Yeah. Um, what were your early influences in television? Were there shows, I think you're fine. I've done a side side, you know what I mean? Yeah, this is, a, this is impenetrable. It's a whole thing when you sit in these chairs. God damn. Oh, hi, sorry, okay. Uh, Mark, what'd you say? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, early influences in television, what, um, what, do you remember that first laugh that you heard and you were like, oh, that's infectious and I would like to be a part of that and I would like to do that myself someday. Do you remember? I totally do, but I'm like afraid to say it. No, say no, it. No, say it. It was the Cosby Show. <laughs> it's real. It's real. It's I, and real. also, be, it, let's talk about the kids on the Cosby Show. That's good, right? So, like, I remember being. <laughs> the is it okay? Is the That's same okay, right? for your looking up your dress? <laughs> Are we you allowed just to talk about Cosby? That. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. no, of course. Yeah. I mean, the Cosby Show was yes. legitimately a very funny program. And being a child. Uh, in watching that show, you kind of thought like, whoa, those kids are, they can do that? I was very fascinated with kids on TV when I was a kid. Yeah. Punky Brewster, like, uh, totally. ju yeah, just Family Matters. Yes, yeah. it, was, it was like. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're all younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. um, I'm like trying to think of an old TV reference and I can't. Well, uh, Gunsmoke. Yeah, yeah gun <laughs> the Andy Griffith show. <laughs> Oh, I do remember watching reruns of I Love Lucy yeah. late I was going to say I Love Lucy, yeah. too, yeah. What was that when they used to show old uh, shows at night? What was that? Uh, Nick, Nick at, at night. night? Yes! Yeah. Nick at Night. Yeah. You yeah. are yeah. younger than I am. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there were a lot of those, um, you know, the, um, the, man, there was some good TV back then, huh? Mm -hmm. 
Cheers, The Cosby Show. There was a bunch of a bunch of good sitcoms. Um, and I even like even remember. I know this isn't the, the Simpsons. When I was a kid, was like it felt like something I had never seen before. Sure, really sure. When influenced. you were a kid. When you were a kid. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, The Simpsons. Yeah. None taken. None taken. Um, how cool is it to be on NBC, which has such a giant legacy of shows like Cheers and Seinfeld and Frasier and Friends? I mean, that's really good and, and historic company, isn't it? Absolutely. It's a huge deal. You know what I mean? I mean, there's, it's so iconic. All of those shows, Office, Parks and Rec, uh, the, the, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, it's, it's, it's looming at first, certainly, right. because it's like there's a huge list of things to to live up to, the bar feels very high, but that's a pretty cool group to be a part of. And then it's a weird thing because now we're on with Will and Grace, you know, which yeah. was like, yeah. a, which was a part of that must-see TV. When, when, you when were, we were when so we were young. Born. When you were born. We were yeah. so yeah. young. I mean, like I don't, high school. Yeah. I don't, oh, yeah, or maybe. younger. Or no, younger. I, mean, I don't remember the original Will and Grace. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like literally not that much younger than you at all. But no, but it, that, like that's a very cool thing that they're yeah. on again, and we get to be on that that channel with them. Um, I'm like, I, 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 I'm such an NBC head. Yeah. <laughs> I like all my favorite shows were too. NBC. Yeah. 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 So it was it, uh, that was not lost on and me. And SNL too. Let's not gloss over. Like that's like a huge. I think for so many people in so many generations, but certainly for me, that was like the biggest. And it's we I wonder if it's weird because you've now on the show you're on, you've been on two networks. I don't know if we're even allowed to talk about that, but don't you think NBC is cooler? <laughs> boom, boom, boom. I mean, I don't wanna say or not say. <laughs> you can't quote her. Like use words. Right. <laughs> I'd say just bring them up on stage. But just bring them to us. Oh, there's oh drinks! Gosh, yes. <laughs> Matthew Mitchell, everybody. The hardest working gentleman is the wine for me? Yeah, the wine. Oh, yes. I, Mommy's I feel, happy. I feel like you knew what time the show started. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Cheers, starring Ted Danson. It's when it hits your lips. When the, when the panel becomes a drinking game. Do you, do you want to we talking share about? this with me? I don't think we ever answered why we're funny. He asked why we're funny. <laughs> What makes us funny? I'm just trying to honor you, Mark. Yeah. That's Let, honestly all we're trying to do here, Mark, is honor you. That's why I flew here. I need <laughs> to be honored. I will not not be honored. Um, where'd you come from? What's your upbringing? Uh, Lauren, you and I were talking a little bit about the Second City. We were both from the Second yeah. City originally. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, uh, I started at the Second City in Toronto. I dropped out of theater school, actually. I had a, a full, yeah, throw away your life. Screw Woo! theater school. Uh, Run quit out. things. I was going to theater school and I was miserable. And the only thing I liked was improv. That was the only component that I really liked. So I quit and I literally took the subway to the Second City and signed up for classes. And then I got hired at the touring company in less than a year. Uh, which was awesome. And then, yeah, I always refer to that as being kind of my college years. You know For what sure. I mean? Like, that really did give me the comedy training that has got me where I am now. So, yeah, I toured for three years. I did the Toronto main stage for two years. And then I did the Chicago main stage for two years. So, real graduate program of GD comedy. You know what I mean? <laughs> it for real Cheers. is. Yeah. <laughs> but truly, like... Get being on stage every night and getting immediate response, like you learn very quickly like what works and what doesn't because sure. it's, it's an Im immediate you know, feedback from the audience. So it's, it's a pretty good tool, training. And not to, not to, we can keep answering that question, but don't you find, because I also came up in comedy theater, yeah. don't you find it's such a weird um, uh, adjustment to then doing comedy on, on TV and, and nobody laughs? Yes. Because they, they can't, because if they laugh, they'll ruin the take, But right? that's, yes, but Still that's happens. why I, I right. literally, I push until I make people I laugh. I know. Yeah. It's a really weird adjustment because you, you'll, you'll do a day at work and you have funny lines and if they don't, we're so programmed to hear the laugh that if you don't hear the laugh on the drive home, I'm just like, well, I really, I'm gonna get fired. <laughs> I was so terrible today. I mean, it's, it's a weird thing that your brain has to adjust to. Now, sure. I love to not hear laughs. You ruined it. <laughs> you ruined it. Um, each of the shows that you 
that you all represent are, uh, are really special and wonderful. They're, uh, I think, 201, uh, super smart and uh, yet very silly. There's a lot of heart in them. I feel like this, you know, all three shows do that really nicely, and, um, and I wonder if discussions happen about that, about how to approach that stuff. What are your relationships with your showrunners? Are you able to, to collaborate and talk to the writers or the showrunner about your characters, about storylines, about things? You're all deeply into seasons. You know, we're in seasons four and five and six. Well, you wrote recently, didn't Correct, you? Correct, yeah. I did. I wrote an episode in season three called um, Gender Reveal, and that was amazing. I mean, we've had a really collaborative experience on Superstore. Justin Spitzer has been really open to hearing our thoughts and feedback, and we improvise a lot on the show, and they use a lot of it, so it's cool. Like, it, it definitely feels like an, an actual creative collaboration for me, anyway. It's so interesting, because you have a, a gigantic cast. Right. I mean, you have a gigantic set, and so many uh, you know, locations that you can use within what is effectively a giant bottle. Right. Um, but uh, like, there are so many cast members, each of whom seem like straight killer snipers. Like, uh, the show moves so quickly because the, you, can, you have to watch it twice because there are so many things that you go back for. One of my favorite things are the interstitials too, which is almost reminiscent of The Office where just like, yeah. you'll cut to somebody doing something stupid and then looking to see if anybody noticed and then they'll just move on. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's pretty great. Yeah. It's pretty great. Yeah, it's a giant show, which is ironic because Ben Feldman is four foot two. So. <laughs> Tweet that. Tweet it. He's gonna be so pissed. Use the hashtag Ben's dumb shirt. That's a callback to three three years ago, and when we were on this stage. So there you go. Tag him. Tag him. Um, how did how did writing that episode come about? Uh, that was in season three. That was a season ago. Yeah. And uh, did you ask for it? Uh, did you had you done that before? Yeah. You know, coming from a second city background, obviously we write for ourselves. And and then I went back to Canada and I did a lot of writing for TV up there um, that nobody sees down here. Uh, but then I just I literally just asked. I'm I'm a very kind of uh, reserved person. But there's any time in my life, if you learn anything from me today, children, it's that you'd be surprised how much you can get if you just ask for it. And yeah, I asked and they were like, oh, cool, yeah, let's talk about it. And then it happened, which I didn't think would. But. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. Darcy and I were talking about this last night when we were, as we were traveling here about like, um, I think this is true in acting and, and the creative arts, but also just in the universe. Like, it is a really delicate balance of please may I, and I need it now. Uh, like, like, you have to be a little bit narcissistic and, and ask for it, but also balance it by being utterly grateful. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, it's a really interesting thing. Uh, Melissa, you directed an episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine wow. this yes. season. Was it fun? It was so fun. Um, yeah, and similarly, it was, I... Uh, I had always planned to ask for season six, um, but then we got canceled and then picked up. You, and, what? By whom? <laughs> so, what is it? Who would have? Um, and, um, and then I chickened out, basically. Cause, oh, no way. Really? Yeah, in the beginning, um, because I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, it's our first season on NBC, and like, let me wait a little longer. Um, and then we, they ordered five more episodes, um, and... Joe and Stephanie and I decided to all put our names in the hat and just kind of go in, well, they could say no. And uh, they didn't. They were like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Really supportive. Um, and it was a blast. And I loved doing it. And I want to do more of it. And cool. yeah, I found like a, another thing I really like, which is exciting to do in your 30s. I feel like that doesn't happen as often. Sure, in your 30s. It was like, ah. Um. Uh, <laughs> Early 30s, too. Very early. <laughs> Very early. All the way in the beginning. <laughs> Basically 29. The, um, yeah. Uh, that's a different brain pathway, right? That's a different yes. skill set. Yes. Now, you are an organized person. There's, a, there's some Amy Santiago in you. I don't know what you're talking about, Mary. <laughs> uh, yeah, there is. I really enjoyed the homework of it. <laughs> I did. I didn't know what to expect, and once I started working on prep, and I got home, and I was like, oh, oh, I get oh. to make lists, <laughs> and drawings, and charts, oh. I was like, oh, God, <laughs> this is very Amy. Um, 
but it was great. And yes, I, my organizational skills definitely lent themselves to the job. Um, and it also was so fun to direct my castmates, who I know so well after six years, and I was like, oh, for a week, I get to give them everything they like. Oh. There's your, there's your beer. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matthew Pat. Mitchell, everybody. Yay. Pound it. Pound it. I, there's no reason that happened. <laughs> that you got um, here? Nobody thought you were going to say uh, that they like. Everybody thought you were going to say, give them every note I've ever wanted to give them. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, no, I, like, you know, just, just kind of give them a week off from everything they don't like. <laughs> what, what are those things for, for Andy, for Stephanie? Uh, I mean, you're asking me to spill the tea right spill now. Spill a little tea. Spill a little tea. We're at a panel drinking game. Spill I won't name names or be specific, but Andy. As, as a whole, <laughs> um, with Andy, it's just nice because I'm like, oh, he just, can somebody get Andy a coffee? He needs coffee. Like, I could just look at his face and be like, he needs a treat. Can somebody get him a cookie? <laughs> his shot's coming up and the, he needs a cookie. Great. Um, he, uh, yeah, I think as a whole, our cast really doesn't love to get notes like right out, right out the gate. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, which yeah. I think is pretty common across yeah, the board. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We like a few runs. Yeah. And then we like the kind of notes that like make it better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just real basic stuff. Um, but no, it was it was fun. I, I had a great time and I love my cast. It was a very funny thing. Uh, I was not in that episode, but I was no. in the episode that Joe Latrulio directed. Yes. And um, uh, he, Joe Latrulio is an improviser as well, and he's a noted buttoner and tagger and will go long. Yes, we call him Butt McGee. Yeah. Uh, he will deliver lots of hilarious lines, many of which make it long after the script has com been completed. And... Uh, we were doing a scene, Andy and I, and the second we were done, he was like, cut! And Andy, it happened a couple times, and Andy was like, what uh, yeah. are you doing? <laughs> you, ha like, you have to let us play. And he's like, oh, right, sorry. Like, oh, I think there's so much, so, so much pressure to like, make your day, get, get the uh -huh. scene shot that you want to get shot, right? Yeah, I think, I think I heard Stephanie did that, too. I think because I spend so much time with Andy that I, I knew from the beginning, I was like, oh, do not. Like, I almost waited too long to say cut because I've been with him in those moments so many times where a director said cut too soon. Yeah. 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 Um, so I guess Andy just has me really well trained. Yeah. He at is, this uh, point. we should mention him for a moment. He is a remarkably kind, skilled, wonderful person. Um, almost in the vein of uh, Kristen Bell and a Ted Danson, like, a, like yeah. a legitimately wonderful person. He is a unicorn. And they're all hot. <laughs> all, yeah. All three of those people. Yeah. I'll, drink, I'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Darcy, uh, this has been reported so we can talk about it. Uh, Kristen Bell is directing an upcoming episode. Yeah. We had a rehearsal for one of the scenes yesterday. Yeah. And um, I, I, like, I used to think that, oh, like, someday I'll be a, in the writer's room, I'll be a showrunner, I'll direct or whatever. Um, no. Like, that, I don't have the brain for it. It's like, it's a, hard. It's a lot of work, yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, as you guys know, it's not, it's not just, you know, you have, to, you have to know what you're doing. Yeah. A lot. Like, a lot of things. Yeah. You have to know what you're doing. You really do. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I, I, I but who, she's so capable. I've been telling her since season one that she should direct. That's cool. Yeah. She said for a few seasons when, when it's come up, like, I'm not doing it yet, but I am paying attention. Yes, yes, she yes. She said that a lot. She, I mean, she knows more about being on a set. She, I feel like she's been on a set for 20 years. She's, she's mostly she, been on set. And she really knows her stuff. I mean, I, I, there's, I learn a lot from her. Yeah. Yeah. She's pretty great. Oh, yeah. I love that chick. Uh, I, I really do. Darcy, we were at an event last night at the Television Academy in Hollywood and uh, talking about NBC's The Good Place and uh, pretty much no news broke. <laughs> um, I next, haven't heard anything. Next yeah. question. Yeah, it was unremarkable. Uh, I don't have a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> so should I tell in case they don't know? Oh, I think they, they know. know. Okay. 
Yes, please. Okay, so we, so season four upcoming is, I know, I'm seeing some thumbs downs. It's our last season, which is, um, you know, like equal parts, so sad and so cool, I think, which I feel like, do you guys agree? Yeah. It's like, it's such a bummer, but you're also like, you know what? Yes, right? I feel like shows that I love, when they do that, I'm always like, much respect to you. Like, it's, it's hard as a fan of a show when they decide to be done, but you're... It's but they're also, going out on their own yeah, terms, Yeah, it's, right? it's cool. And, and I tr Mike Schur's our, our showrunner, as you guys know, and I, I truly trust him with my life mm -hmm. somehow. And, and yeah. you know, we always kind of said se we would do four or five seasons, and I think the cast and probably crew and writers, everybody was crossing their fingers for five. And when he said four, it was like, I, I'm sure you're right. I'm not going to question this. 100%. You, yeah, you've been right this whole time. I mean, in one sense, uh, season two could only disappoint, <laughs> right? Like, right. after season one, that, that uh, holy mother forking shirt balls reveal, um, the, uh, like, the totally. hubris necessary to embark on a second season. <laughs> Truly. But also, I so respect that they took it in a different direction and... and you know, continued, they meaning the writers who I'm, who I'm truly obsessed with. I love, I, I, I need, you do. I, I a, can't it's leave. It's kind of a lot. I know. I, what yeah. do I do? What am I going to do? I, it, I mean. What am I going to do? It, you have a problem. Right. Um, but they, they um, you know, they kept going with the, with the surprises and the twists and everything, but in such a different way. They're, I, I'm, you know, I, I, will, I will beg those freaks to let me work with them until the day I die, which... I, <laughs> I don't know when that's going to be. Which, given the chair you're sitting in, could be today. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> um, yeah. That seems counter to the mission. We okay? We okay? What? We're okay? Okay. We're okay? We're good? We're good? Okay. <laughs> Um, all of your shows have had some remarkable uh, guest opportunities. Yeah. Um, are there are there some memorable, uh, you know, notable guests that you'd like to uh, to talk about? One that pops out to me f right off the bat is I remember um, it would have been season two, um, sitting with some of the cast on a break, and we were talking about who would be your like ideal guest if we could pick anyone in the world, and I thought of someone right away and, and I was like, if Maya Rudolph was on our show, I don't know that I could even look at her. <laughs> and then the next week, Mike was like, Maya Rudolph's gonna be on the show. <laughs> and as you know, and if you guys know her, she's, she's the f Just... best. She's wonderful. Am I allowed to say f***ing on this? Can I say f I think can we I can. Say f Is it yeah. We can say f We can say f***ing and f Okay. I support you. Okay. Yeah. You've said the Cosby show a bunch. I think we're good. <laughs> yeah. Anybody uh, come to mind? Some notable guests? Uh, similar for me with Maya, but I wasn't in the scenes, which I was like bummed, but also okay with, because right. I was like, I'll say all the wrong totally, things. Totally, totally. And just stare at her creepily. I, I had a full couple days before I even like introduced myself. Yes. And now we're straight up buds. Oh man. Ugh. So jealous. <laughs> uh, Lin Manuel Miranda was great. Who? He first tweeted about Brooklyn early season one. Um, it's his favorite show. Yeah, and he sang. I'm in my favorite show, I'm inside my favorite show, like all the time, and we were all like, what? Shut up. <laughs> you, you don't get to freak out, we do. Um, I literally, like, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just have to say, like, I, he is, I got introduced to him at an NBC event last year because, because he was there. Yeah. It was the day you guys got picked up. You yeah. brought him. I was like, you and saved the show, come with me to this NBC that's right. party. Yes, and so, <laughs> that's right. So I'm in the corner going, Mel Miranda's over there. And then Patty Murrin, who's uh, in Bro on Broadway in Frozen, yeah. yes. The sweetest human, she's a superstar fan. She's like, I'll introduce you, it's fine. And I was like, don't do it. She's like, come on over here. I was like, don't do it. And she brings me up and she goes, Lynn, this is Lauren Ash. She goes, oh yeah, from Superstore. And I said. <laughs> I... Yeah. Anyway, I just had to say, I. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, perfect. Okay. Oh, perfect. So I jealous. The, the, face, the face you made is the exact perfect. face I made when Amy Poehler came to set oh, season wow. one. And Stephanie and I were like standing by one of the desks and she came, comes over and she says, big ball of sunshine. And she's just so nice. She's like, hi, I'm Amy. And I literally was like, hi, I'm Melissa. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. And that was it. That yeah. was all that came out of my mouth. It's hard just, to meet your heroes. And those uh, three people, Lynn and Amy and Maya, are three, you know, and they say, like, don't meet your heroes. A lot of comedy heroes end up being okay. Those three people in particular. If you say Bill Cosby right now, as God is my witness, as God is my witness. It's a spectrum. Yeah. But those are three people that are like truly, deeply good, wonderful people. Yeah. Yeah. A wonderful Um, moment just happened uh, at the hotel before we arrived, which was I was talking with Lauren and uh, a woman came from behind Lauren, didn't, uh, wasn't able to see who she was. And she said to me like, Hi, I really enjoy your work. And she turned and saw Lauren and went, Oh my God! <laughs> You're nothing. She's everything. Hi. So she's, like, yeah. she's like, just, I don't want to interrupt. I just really, Oh my God! Oh my God! <laughs> and then like that, like, I'm misting tear, like the... I'm gonna, this is like, I, I have no reason to say this, but I have to, okay? At the end of last season, the finale, there was um, a, a guy on the show who's playing a character named John, who, who's sort of like Tahani's nemesis, if this sounds familiar. The actor that plays that role is this guy named Brandon Scott Jones, who is my best friend. And he, we've been best friends for over 10 years, and he got cast on the show without even me saying anything. Yeah. And maybe he's on more this season. Maybe. Yeah, it's the best thing in the world. That's awesome. Yeah, it's cool. I love that. It's fun because, you, you know, you, you really do, as they say, like sort of become family members with your cast. You, you, you really bond. Yeah. And to have someone that I know and love from, you know, the salad days? What does that mean? My husband said that one time. What does that mean? The salad days? What does it mean? It's a time like, before you could afford meat. Oh. Uh, but yeah. salads are so salads expensive. Salads are so expensive. It should be called the top ramen days. Yeah. yeah, ramen days. The ramen days. Ramen days makes sense. Yeah. Maybe this is a generational thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. Good are we heavens. Gonna, okay, we did spill a beer. Are we going to die? Are we going to electrocute ourselves? No, no, no. Okay, cool. No. Your microphone wire is fully laying, in the beer. Fully laying in it. Is that bad? <laughs> We'll be I think fine. it's okay. I think All it's right. fine. I know it's... for sure. We're fine. Great. Darcy's chair poses a far greater threat. <laughs> um. Each of your shows, as I said, uh, simultaneously is super goofy and silly, but also has a lot of heart. Um, I'm thinking back to episodes like Show Me Going on Brooklyn and... Um, and I've forgotten the episode, but it was recent. Uh, that like... Uh, um, Boyle and Peralta had kind of a meaningful uh, little scene at the end about, you know, being on each other's nerves but being buds and they put hats on at the end kind of thing. Um, oh, yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. the balance of like the silliness and I feel like NBC shows as a brand do this better than other networks. I really do because I feel like so many shows are like goofy, goofy, goofy for 25 minutes and then in the last act they the music. like a slow motion montage and some voiceover goes you know, I guess at the end of the day, we're all family. And it's like, you did yeah. not earn that. You have to earn it. You did not earn that. Yeah. I, I have seen those shows, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, you know, it's the Mike Schur, Dan Gore kind of universe of from The Office to Parks and Rec, and, and I think that they are so brilliant on Brooklyn. Dan is so brilliant at, at um, just really making these characters a little larger than life, but also grounded. And at this point in, you know, now having done six seasons, we've just pulled back the layers of these characters and just keep finding, like, I feel like we leaned into some of Amy's crazy this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, But then also they gave me an episode where I got to be really vulnerable, and I don't think we would have gotten away with that season two. Um, And that is the genius of what they do. They don't, they let their characters grow. And then those moments are even more heartfelt. Um, and it's just beautiful. I mean, the writers are just 
brilliant. It's wonderful, and the edit the edit does help with that. But somebody that's yeah. remarkably skilled at doing it in one take is Andy Samberg, who can be like, "Look, I love you." Title your sex tape, but I but I'm here for you. Like, I know. You know what I mean? Like he can snap back in a way that few people I've seen can. He's His remarkable. bursting into tears at last season's finale during the wedding. I love you. You're so much. You're my dream girl. After I do the butt joke. Your butt is the bomb. Yeah, your butt is the bomb. <laughs> Was so. It almost made me break every take because he had like, te- like, and he had a joke like right before that, and then he got to that moment and he had like tears in his eyes on a few takes. It was just he makes those turns really fast. I'm remembering uh, something we did a panel a year ago for Brooklyn. Um, I don't think you were there, Melissa, for at, at UCB, and uh, during the Q and A, a woman in the in like the third row asked Andy if she would, if he would look at her. The way he looks at Melissa. I heard about Peralta, this. Peralta to Santiago. And he was like, and he did it, and she burst into tears. Shut up! No. Is this true? 100% oh, true. So he sweet. went, he went. And she went. Oh, I love it. 100%. Lauren. Yeah. Superstore will go there. Superstore tackles some stuff. Yeah, man. You guys have talked about... Uh, gender and class and race and ability and uh, insurance and unionization. The, the, se- the current season ends with Nico Santos's character in an ice van. Like that's a that's a stark balance between you know dropping ice cream in people's shopping bags and stuff. Like <laughs> like wh- how do you guys think about that? What's talked about on set about keeping maintaining that balance and, and earning those moments? I think what's interesting about it is that I don't think Justin ever set out to do like an issues show. Um, But what started to happen was because I feel like our show really encapsulates kind of a cross section of America and and ultimately the world in a sense, but but certainly what we're dealing with in America. I, I, and I say this a lot, but I feel like it would be disingenuous not to address these things. It would feel like we would have to literally sidestep around, like, oh, well, we can do this storyline, but ooh, then, then we're going to be talking about healthcare, and we don't want to talk about that. Um, so I think what's been great is that that not only had Justin and the writers really embraced it, but NBC really embraced it too. And, and there's been things in those scripts at table reads where we'll read them and then we'll go, Beth isn't going to stay and they're not going to let us do that. And then they do, which you, is so cool. You wrote it into gender reveal. You wrote the word abortion like six times. And <laughs> like, do you want to go to the clinic, the abortion clinic for an abortion? <laughs> like, like you <laughs> went there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, but honestly, because, but for me in that episode, that's a great example because I was like, Amy has a teenage daughter. She's going through a divorce. She's now gotten pregnant with her essentially ex-husband's baby. It, we have to address this. I was like, you know, in the room, I remember I was like, you know, whatever we want to do in terms of story, whether you want her to have the baby or not have the baby, I was like, we have to address this because it's absolutely absurd to be on television in 2019 and not address the fact that this woman, you know, would have that choice. It would be considered, right. Right, and, and should have that choice, obviously. Um, but it's become, it's become a really cool thing, and, and it's something that I'm really proud of. I'm really proud to be a part of something that isn't afraid to talk about those things in a way that's still funny, you know? It's, it's, it's not kind of saying, like, this is what's going on, and here's the opinion, and here's what you should do. It's kind of more just saying, like, this is the situation we're in, yeah. and that's it. You know, it's presenting it the way it, it really is uh, currently in the country. I had a comedy director once, Bruce Perry, at Second City Toronto, Say to me that he thinks that good comedy isn't, wouldn't it be funny if, good comedy is, isn't it funny that? And I think that that really encapsulates it, that it's like, isn't it funny slash crazy slash outrageous that this is the world we live in? And I think that that's something that we've been doing, which is a really cool thing. And that f***ing finale, like, oh my God. Get out of it! I don't know what their plan is. I'm like, guys, like, what now? He's he's still on the payroll. So what what we doing? Um, well, we we read that script and America and I were sobbing. The two of us at the end were just like, this is crazy. I mean, it was, yeah, it's a cool thing. It's so delicately balanced, though. Again, like earlier in the episode, you're doing the the you know tech support, like turn left, turn right. You're on the surveillance cams kind of thing, and it's it's a heist movie. It's it's farce it's it's playful 
And then moments later, Nico's in a, you know, in a van. Like, it's super sad. Are, are you Good back super in store. You said super S sad. S S super. You said stupid store. <laughs> Why? It's okay. I'm, it's okay. Um, so you, uh, are you back in yet? Have you read we're not back 601 yet. or 501 yet? No, we're not back yet. The writers are going back, I think, this week or next week. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Darcy, uh, oh. will you talk a little bit? Um, a remarkable thing happened uh, last season, and that is that you played every character in yeah. the Amazing. You remember that, right? You remember that. What are you trying to do to us? What don't you... Had you come with a mop, I would have been like, okay. You were... Where have you been? Yes. Getting our spirit. An hour ago, I spilled that. Um, Thank Darcy, you. Thank what you. is happening? Talk a little bit about the... Uh, trying to get us drunk. About Truly. the Janet's episode. Okay. Um, a lot went into that. Right. Uh, in a practical sense, uh, very smartly at the table read, you, uh, the producers had each cast member play their actual role as the Chidi Janet right. and the Eleanor Janet and the Jason Janet and the Tahani Janet. Um, but then, and then you did it, what next? So we, we um, that was so helpful to have everybody read their own parts because, you know, I wanted to hear them say their lines the way they would say it. And I, and I sneakily recorded it on my phone <laughs> and then listen, and then, <laughs> and then just listen to that constantly for the next couple weeks as we were getting ready to do that, that episode. Um, we did one rehearsal that was so helpful and hopefully, I, I really hope it like leaks or something because they they have you seen it? No, but there's a touch of it in the gag reel. Did right. you notice that? I did. Yeah, we had the cameras set up the way they were going to be in this big white void, and the actual actors playing their actual parts. And we did a full episode rehearsal, and they filmed it, and they cut it together in like a day, and then they sent it to me so I could kind of watch how they would do their things and just the blocking of it all because it was a lot to keep in our heads. Um, and, oh my God, you guys, I watched it so many times. My poor husband, honestly, my poor husband. That, the, the couple weeks leading up to that episode, he, he deserves, I don't know what, a big kiss. <laughs> he helped me so much. He helped me so much. <laughs> How innocent. Uh, yeah. How beautiful. I didn't say where the kiss was. Yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't have to say that. There it is. Um... Okay, I want to ask a specific question. Yeah. Uh, first, will you tell the story about when you were driving home? Oh, yeah, yeah. so I was, uh, for those couple weeks that I was preparing, I was listening to that, that um, table read voice memo constantly, like no music, no podcast, nothing, just always that, just so I could, memorizing is hard, y'all, right? And to memorize yeah. an episode where you're saying every line back and forth to each other is just a weird little mind. So I had to really get my lines down. And I was terrified of, 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 anyone waiting for me for any reason on that set. I wanted it to be like, you know, sure. I wanted it to be toy. <laughs> Noise. Um, <laughs> toy knobs. Noise. You guys. <laughs> um, and I, at one day, I was driving down, the, driving down the street, and William Jackson Harper was walking on the street, and I, I clocked him, and I pulled my car over and rolled my window down, and his voice was just blasting in my car. <laughs> And he put his little, like, his arms inside my car, and he went, oh, no, you're going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> One final thing on that. I read, an, or I think I read in an interview uh, today that you said that Will retyped his lines in the way that he does for yes. himself. It was kind of wild. Everybody, we, it, it's a weird thing when you're playing your friends and your castmates. It's like this weird sort of like almost awkward, you know, I, I didn't really want them, I didn't want too much help from them. I wanted to like do it by myself. Like I didn't want to, it, it just felt a little weird. So each one of them sort of individually gave me help on their own accord. Will retyped his lines the way I guess he does for every episode, which is wild by the way, and yeah. very cheaty. He, he retyped his lines the way, a way that helps him memorize those, those long speeches and sent them to me. Manny sent me a, a YouTube clip of something that helps him get into Jason that he's never shown or told anyone before, and it totally helped. Oh Jamila God. brought me 
12 donuts. <laughs> um, that is her process. Yes. Yeah. That is, it actually is. Yeah, it actually is, right? Kristen was like, she was the, the coordinator, the scheduler. She was like, we are all on call. If you need us to come to set, we are there. We are available on FaceTime, texting, whatever you need. We are here for you. And then Ted and I had one day on set together because he's in that first scene. And it's a, it was a weird thing. You can imagine like being in a big white room where you're acting with no one. You're acting with um, like a piece of tape or a tennis ball. Oh yeah, the yeah. little X they it's put cuckoo. on the side of the camera. Yeah, it's like yeah. Avengers weird shit, but like it just is weird. It's exactly that. It is, right? <laughs> Uh, kind of. And, and at the end of that day, Ted t pulled me aside and he was like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> he was like, this is going to suck. This is going to be a bad week. You're going to lose your mind. You're not acting with anybody. You, he, he just gave me the advice of like, remember what you're doing and remember who you're playing and what the intention is. Yeah. How many that, days were you by yourself doing it? It was, we, we usually do a five day episode, but this one was eight days. No way. Y'all, I lost my damn mind. <laughs> I would too. It was, it was weird, but yes. it was great. And I, and I can't, I mean, we can talk about anything else right now, but I will just say, oh, Cosby, Cosby. Um, but even though, you know, it was a lot of my Janet big old face on that screen, it was such, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I thought you wanted some. Um, it, was, um, it was such a group effort, as you know, that, and, and as you guys know, because the, like, it's, it's top to bottom. It's like everybody brings their A game and you guys are on the same type of set with the same type of people. Just like good hard workers that want to do good work. And you know, it's, we get like the sort of, I don't know, uh, I was gonna say benefit, but we, we get the like glitz and glamor of being on screen, but oh my God, it's such a group effort, isn't it? 100%. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. It, we're nothing. Yeah. Y'all, we're nothing. Yeah. You know who's something? The PAs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the person that gets to set before you. The camera guy. Yeah, the wardrobe people. Well, and the lighting. You don't want to piss off anybody no, lighting. You, don't. you know what I mean? You <laughs> really don't. That's the difference between looking like you're in your early 30s and like you're looking like you're 110. Mark. Yep. <laughs> you know? You look good, Mark. You, you look guys, great. doesn't Mark look good? Mark always looks good. For what he is. Um... Uh, very sweetly, uh, to thank the crew after, uh, the, that episode in particular was one that lots of people who were not working on that episode stopped by to check out because it was so weird and great. And uh, Darcy Carden got a, a specialty ice cream truck for the, like an ice cream sandwich truck or something, I think, for the... Ooh, cool Bless house. you. Yeah. Bless yeah. you. And, uh, and it, there was a sign that said, thank you, love, the Janets, which was very sweet. Aww. I know, <laughs> right? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take some questions for, from you now. Uh, please remember that uh, we, uh, we just have a few minutes for this, so uh, in order to get a lot in, please begin questions with words like how and who and why and when, and not like, when I made this doll of you with your hair. Um, <laughs> like, why do you I'll have, take that doll. Why do you have our hair? Um, don't do that. Uh, raise your hands, I suppose, right? Yes, please, right here. The Cosby Show for Darcy. The question is, if you could travel in time and join the cast of any show ever, what would it be? Uh, probably if I did play Cliff Don't. Huxtable, things would be better now. Thanks. <laughs> oh, I think Seinfeld. Yeah, girl. What? What role? Is I know, it's not. In Seinfeld? the world or one oh, of the characters? Oh, uh, like, I think in the world. Okay. Yeah. Love it. Uh, are you being served the oh, BBC? Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. Reboot. I was obsessed with that as a kid. Reboot it, please. Oh, that would be a great yeah, reboot. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's a scoop, y'all. That's a scoop. Scoop. I like it. Uh, next question. Yes, please. Sure. Sure. Yes. We'll do both. Um, is there a storyline you'd really like to see for your character that hasn't shown up yet? I am starting a social media campaign and I encourage any of you to get on this right now to get Mark Hamill to play Dina's dad in oh, season wow. five of Superstore. Yes. 100%. He is a fan of the show. He has tweeted me. He has said nice things. That he has made me cry. 
He is Luke yes. Skywalker. It is my dream. That seems like an easy Twitter campaign. That's happening. Please. That's happening. That's happening. Yeah. So that's the storyline. Um, every year I beg for uh, us to meet Amy's brothers. Yeah. Oh. Sure. There's a lot of them, though. Yeah. It's hard. It's true. And also, and, in fairness, you've set the bar very high with Lynn manuel And we started Miranda with Lynn manuel playing, playing David. And now we have to find, like, six more. Right. And um, well, that will be fun. That will be, that's a yeah, fun but we'll adventure. See. Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, uh, I think I just want, I mean, now we're like coming to a close, so there's not, you know. What? Oh, sorry. Um, no one can kick us out. I do love working with Manny, and I love Jason and Janet, and I love, um, every, I will just, I'll just say this. Every time I get to kiss Manny, I, my, my brain says, remember this. <laughs> Uh, that's wonderful. I'm also going to field this question and tell you that uh, I will not let Brooklyn Nine-Nine go until Kevin and Holt renew their vows. Yes! We teased it in the Boyle Linetti wedding several yep. seasons ago, and um, I text Dan Gore about twice a week about it. <laughs> so I will at some point have beaten him down. Uh, yes, please, your question. Uh, if you could play any character on your, uh, each other's shows, who would you play? Oh. 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 Well, we're about to find out they don't watch each other's shows. <laughs> this is about to get real awkward. No. Not, not each other, yeah. Huh? Not each other. I mean, like, oh, uh, off are limits on each other. Say, no, I, guess, I mean, whatever. Janet is like such okay, a... Okay, then say, you that, can, that's, that's, okay. A, that's okay. I don't know why I put a rule on it. <laughs> <laughs> but now that you put a rule on it, I have such love for Nico. I know. You yeah. know, I like. I, oh man. Yeah, it's such a funny role. I went to college with Nico. I was we gonna were, mention that. We were friends. Oh, hey. Isn't that wild? It's wild. Talk about. Yeah, I can mention yeah, it, right? Of course. Uh, I met Nico Santos, uh, Darcy, and Jamila, and I uh, played against Nico on an episode of Jane Lynch's Hollywood Game Night that's upcoming. <laughs> that. Man, if you could get, if, if I could get paid for playing on Hollywood Game Night, that's all I would do. You did Me that. too. You that, did get too. paid. That's, I was on an episode of Game Night with Jamila. Wait, so by much the fun. way, he just said if I could get paid. Did you not get paid? No. I, <laughs> I did I get a check. I, I got, got a check. I, I, got I also paid. got a check. I got paid. I got call. paid. What I'm saying is, if that could be five days a week, got it. That's all I'd all right, do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I have. I. I would. It would be fun to either play, to play Nico. Nico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To play Nico. Yeah. Some Matteo, yeah. 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 Think about it. Next question. Oh. Yes, please. What are things that uh, we saw on screen that were a result of co-star of yours, anything something more, whether it's improvised dialogue, or just something different in terms of energy, that being on the side of the screen, we, we don't we can see that part of the process, really, really affected your work on your respective show. Did you hear the really question? Quick. Did you guys hear it? He's basically saying, um, great question. He was like, what has a, co a co-worker of yours given you that you didn't expect that then informed your reaction? Yeah. And I remember immediately there was an episode in season two, I think, where um, it was called Michael and Janet, or Janet and Michael, mm -hmm. and Ted Danson, he, he, he has this big speech where he's like, the reason is friends. The reason that I can't kill you is because we're, I, we're such good friends. And Ted Danson, oh my fucking God, you guys, he's so good. He's so good, and um, he, he, could, he couldn't get through. The, I'll just make it quick, which is that Janet doesn't cry, and he was so emotional in that moment that Darcy couldn't not cry, so Janet cries now. <laughs> yeah, like there was, no, there was no getting around it. He's, he's, an, he's the, he is the best scene partner that I have ever worked with in my life. And Aww. each of the, the cast members would not say taken. the same. I'm taking <laughs> You would say the same, right? He's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say that I am somebody who, like, I push to try and make everybody else laugh. Like, it's what I do. I'm very hard to break. Uh, I can literally just, like, look at America like this, and then she's like, stop it! <laughs> um, it's my favorite thing. But the only person, and I can say in my entire career, who will break me and break me and break me is Mark McKinney. Oh, he yeah. is so funny. He's Canadian comedy royalty. Royalty, and, oh, bro. Oh, my God. But there, the, the story that I like to tell is there was an episode, I can't remember, I think it was season two, and for some reason, 
Dina and Glenn are each trying to tape record the other person. So I come, do you remember this? So I come into his office with a purse and there's like a tape recorder in it. And he had pre-planned with props. I did not know this. He had pre-planned. And we also like, he didn't do it on the first take. He did it like 12 takes in. So I'm like not expecting any change. And in the middle of this, like, cause the whole thing is that we're trying to like loosen the person up. We're trying to get them to talk. And as he's like maintaining eye contact with me, he opens his desk drawer and he pulls out a pre-poured glass of wine. <laughs> and just slides it across the table. Oh my God. And it is the hardest I've broke in my life. I mean, I was sobbing, like hyperventilating. It was the funniest thing. I've, uh, and I was just like, Marker, you can't, buddy, you can't. Oh, he's the best, he's the best. Always him, anyway, is my point for me. Uh, I think for me, it's Andy. There's been so many moments from, uh, I think that first finale when our characters finally kissed and it had been two seasons of working together and I think I was a little like, oh God, what's a good, what up? we gotta get this right and it felt like a lot of pressure. Um, but he was so present and the scenes ended up being so much more than I even thought they were gonna be and the same with the proposal, all I had to do was look at his face and to the times where he goes, I'm gonna try something and then just shut me up. And I go, okay. Um, and he's, yeah, I've learned so much from him and I think Amy has evolved the way she has in part because of him. He's, yeah, he's the best, like Ted, the best scene partner ever. Again, none taken. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've, re we've reached the end of our time together. Our thanks to you, to ATX Festival, to NBC Universal. Please join me in thanking Lauren Ash, Melissa Fumero, and Darcy Carden. Thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, thank you. This was fun. <laughs> Sorry you. to have spilt beer.